Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, the vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao versus Chris Algieri. I like Manny Pacquiao in that fight. There's a great article on BoxingScene.com this morning where Freddie Roach talks about how the Pacquiao game plan will be to take away Chris Algieri's jab. Now make no mistake, I consider both of these guys talented. I consider Chris Algieri to have great legs. He moves around the ring extremely well. Here's the problem in this fight. I think it's important not to take Manny Pacquiao for granted. Sometimes you forget how good a fighter is simply because the fighter has been in the public limelight so long and fans seem to get really excited about the shiny new fighter just like the shiny new cars right next year's car model you say oh my god let's not forget who Manny Pacquiao is Chris Algieri bursts on the scene by beating Richland Provotnikov. Now, I believe Provotnikov, who used to spar with Manny Pacquiao, right? Provotnikov used to be a Freddie Roach fighter. I believe Provotnikov would be a tough matchup for Manny Pacquiao. But just understand, with regard to Chris Algieri, Provotnikov doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's foot speed. Folks, they're not in the same area code in terms of foot speed. Manny Pacquiao has great legs. Richland Provodnikov has a big punch, but doesn't get there as fast as Manny Pacquiao. He can't do some of the things that Manny Pacquiao does. Provodnikov likes to try to walk you down. Manny Pacquiao doesn't have to. His feet are such that he can stay outside. And he can choose when to jump in. Then he can choose when to jump out. That's a different dynamic. You're not going to notice Chris Algieri's great legs against Manny Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao is going to neutralize them. When you see fighters with great legs in against each other, think Sean Porter versus Cal Brook. Right? Neither fighter will then have that much of an advantage in terms of the legs. It looks like two regular guys in the ring, right? Because the footwork nullifies each other. So my point to you is simply the huge foot speed advantage, and it was sizable, that Algieri had against Provodnikov that allowed Algieri to move around the ring against Provodnikov is not going to be there against Manny Pacquiao. Right? As they move around the ring, you're going to notice that Algieri won't be able to back away from Manny Pacquiao like he did Richland Provodnikov. Right? Let's talk about defense, too. Richland Provodnikov's defense is really his offense. You're getting hit with withering hooks, right? You're woozy. You don't really have the time to hit him back, right? You saw that early in the Chris Algieri fight when Provodnikov drops Algieri twice, right? Understand Manny Pacquiao is much harder to deal with than Wishman Provodnikov defensively because Pacquiao moves more than Wishman Provodnikov. Right? I know Provodnikov is going to be right about here trying to take me out. I know where to find him. If I want to clinch him, I can take a step forward. He's right here. Right? Manny Pacquiao, that's different. Manny Pacquiao's all over the ring. You don't see a lot of fighters able to even clinch Manny Pacquiao. Understand, 
Manny is shorter. He's quick. He's not just fast. He doesn't just go from point A to point B in a short period of time. Right? Rather, he's also quick in terms of he's able to change direction. He makes up his mind. It happens quickly. Right? It's not just speed, it's quickness. So understand, a guy like Algieri is going to have a harder time finding Manny Pacquiao than he would have finding Ruslan Provotnikov. Once you figure out how to block Provotnikov's hooks, you know where he is. You can plan for him. You can defend yourself. That's harder to do with Manny Pacquiao, who is outside, and you don't even know when he's going to enter the frame. Look at the Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya fight. De La Hoya is paralyzed by Pacquiao's quickness. He doesn't know what to defend next. Pacquiao has blinding hand speed. Even today, Manny Pacquiao has some of the fastest hands in the sport. Now here online, I've talked about guys who I think who can hang with Manny Pacquiao. I famously took Timothy Bradley not once but twice over Manny Pacquiao, right? Bradley, in my opinion at least, delivered in the first fight. Judge's opinion too. Did not deliver in the second fight. I know there's a difference of opinion on that. Fair enough. Disagree with me as you please, right? It's a free country. But understand, Timothy Bradley is shorter than Chris Algieri. Timothy Bradley also is blessed with foot speed. Right? Timothy Bradley, because he's on the same plane with Manny Pacquiao, he's not looking down at Manny Pacquiao, can do certain things that I don't believe a taller fighter like a Chris Algieri can do. I think Algieri's going to find Pacquiao is exceedingly hard to hit. Keep in mind, too, that unlike Rishlan Pavotnikov, Pacquiao's a southpaw, right? For a taller jabber, it's my belief that a right-handed jabber has a harder time landing that jab on a southpaw who moves around the ring. If the southpaw is stationary, okay, even I can land a jab on that southpaw. But when the southpaw has movement, it's hard for a right-handed fighter to land a left jab. You know what they say, conventional wisdom, right? Is that the way to stop a southpaw for a right-handed fighter is a straight right hand, not a left jab, right? So understand, here again, there's a big difference between Pacquiao and Provotnikov. Provotnikov is a conventional stance fighter. Pacquiao is a southpaw. Right? Let's also talk about things experts aren't talking about. The magnitude of the event. Right? I've noticed that fighters, unless you're someone like Azuma Nelson, right? Fighters have a very hard time traveling to another country and fighting a homegrown fighter. Right? Or a fighter who is beloved in the jurisdiction, right? When I say homegrown, I'm not necessarily saying that the fighter grew up in the area. What I'm saying is, you know, take Vladimir Klitschko in Germany, right? Take Arthur Abraham in Germany. Take Johan Hernandez in Germany. These guys have established a base in Germany. So whether the guys were born in Germany or not, it's very hard to beat them on German soil. Right? Understand Manny Pacquiao has already fought in Macau. He's beloved in Macau. His fight against Brandon Rios was a financial bonanza. Right? I would say in Asia... Manny Pacquiao, a Filipino, has very few peers at the box office, right? I believe in China, maybe Zhou Shiming might rival him in popularity, but Pacquiao is going to be the beloved fighter on fight night. You know that, 
Now, Chris Algieri has a double whammy working against him. Right? Let's talk about it. First, Chris Algieri has rarely, if ever, fought outside of New York State. This is going to be his first trip abroad. Right? That's, you know, carries a big risk. This is going to be the first fight where Chris Algieri has had to think about a visa. Has had to think about a language barrier. Has had to fight away from home. Right? Many of Chris Algieri's fights have taken place out on Long Island. Right? Chris Algieri has barely fought in New York City. He's fought in front of friendly crowds out on Long Island. Look at his history. Now he's going to go to Macau to try to fight an internationally beloved fighter, right, in a country where his opponent has already fought. You know, as Manny Pacquiao's camp goes forward with this fight, they're going to do things that they've already done in Macau. Right? They know the lay of the land better than Chris Algieri. There is a possibility that emotionally, Chris Algieri might just be too overwhelmed by the magnitude of the event. He's never been on a stage this big in a fight of this magnitude. Right? How many of you even knew who Chris Algieri was before he fought? Richland Provotnikov, right? This is a big fight. It might be too big for Chris Algieri. It would be a tough fight for him at home. Now here he is fighting in a place where Manny Pacquiao is beloved. That's the first problem. The second problem is when you're fighting a guy with fast hands and a tough Chin. I know Manny Pacquiao got drilled by Marquez in their last fight. But Manny Pacquiao really hasn't been knocked out much lately. I know if you go back to early in his career, Pacquiao got stopped. Right? I believe Torrealba knocked out Manny Pacquiao. But understand, over the last several years, Manny Pacquiao really hasn't been stopped in a fight. It's only Marquez who seemed to have the timing down to drop Pacquiao twice in their last fight. Now the problem is this. If Manny Pacquiao's chin holds up, and let's face it too, Chris Algieri is not known as a big puncher. Right? He's not. So if you're fighting before a crowd that is very friendly toward Manny Pacquiao, where most of the people are coming out to see Manny Pacquiao, in a promotion where Pacquiao is the A side and you're the B side. And if you don't knock out Manny Pacquiao, right, given Pacquiao's hand speed, right, if Manny Pacquiao picks up the volume and just throws a lot of punches. Let's be real here. What are your chances of winning on the scorecard? Right? If you don't stop Manny Pacquiao and Manny Pacquiao lets his hands go for 12 rounds, throws a lot of punches, moves around the ring, is hard to find in the ring, then aren't you going to lose this fight on the scorecards by several rounds, right? Algeria is going to have to change the dynamic of the fight. Understand, too, another thing we rarely talk about with Pacquiao is the fact that Pacquiao doesn't bruise easily, right? You know, there are very few Pacquiao fights where you even see a welt on Manny Pacquiao's face. Understand the visual matters. If Pacquiao bruises, and if you have a great jab, and if you're able to land that jab, and Algeri, in my opinion, will have a problem landing the jab, then maybe 
If you were to bust up the guy's face, close an eye or something like that, maybe the injury would change the direction of the fight. Think Pauli Malinaji when he beat Shashenko, right, in Russia, right? The problem is Manny Pacquiao doesn't get busted up, right? Manny's eyes never close, right? You never see a Manny Pacquiao fight where one eye is closed and he can barely see out of the other, right? And so that's another problem, right? Manny Pacquiao is hard to cut. He's hard to injure. So you add it all up, and to me, everything leans in the direction of Manny Pacquiao. Add in the fact that Pacquiao still packs a big punch. Right? Let's be clear, too, on Marquez's mastery of him in the fourth fight. Understand Marquez himself had problems with Pacquiao's speed in the first two fights. You remember, Marquez gets dropped three times. In the first fight, he gets dropped early in the second fight. In other words, Pacquiao's speed is an eye-opener. Even Hall of Fame-bound fighters have a problem dealing with Pacquiao's speed. Right? On the front end. Now, Marquez was able to solve the puzzle, but just understand, Pacquiao's speed is such that you almost have to necessarily give Pacquiao the first three rounds of the fight, right? Because if anyone is going to surprise the other person early, I believe Manny Pacquiao is going to be the person who surprises Chris Algieri early, right? If Manny Pacquiao lands the kind of bombs that he landed against Oscar De La Hoya, right? How do we know that Chris Algieri is even going to make it to the later rounds when Algieri had to get off the canvas twice early against Richland Provotnikov, right? The problem with being a skilled counterpuncher who adapts as the fight goes along is that in those early rounds right when you're unfamiliar with your opponent you're vulnerable right unfortunately he's fighting exactly the kind of opponent whose hand speed and accuracy with that long distance straight left are gonna make life extremely uncomfortable for him in the early part of the rounds Let's talk about another theory I have, and this is that judges, especially when they are judging fights where the favored hometown fighter, you know, the fighter who is popular with the crowd at the beginning of the fight, wins rounds. I'm telling you that judges will fall into a pattern of giving the close rounds to that fighter. In other words, Manny Pacquiao is going to come out. You and I know that if Pacquiao throws a punch that gets within six inches of Chris Algieri, the crowd's going to go nuts, whether Algieri rolls with the punch or not. And understand, Algieri, who is highly skilled, has a game that's somewhat subtle. In other words, guys throw punches, Algieri will roll with the punch, right? It'll be obvious to those of us watching on TV that Algeri has defended the punch. But you know how it is in an arena. If Manny Pacquiao comes in throwing a few punches and gets within six inches of Chris Algeri, the crowd's going to start cheering. Now let's say Pacquiao comes out and decks Chris Algeri early. Right? You're going to have a different dynamic than you had in the Ruslan Provotnikov fight. Right? Algeri was the fighter more beloved by the crowd at the beginning of that fight. So Algieri was able to get off the canvas twice and then come back and win the scorecards. Here, Manny Pacquiao is going to be the beloved fighter. I'm telling you, if Pacquiao decks Chris Algieri early, like Richland Provotnikov did, and if the judges start writing in, you know, Pacquiao as the winner of the early rounds, the crowd's going to go nuts. You're going to get to the 4th, 5th, 6th rounds, 
and these judges are going to be almost like robots, writing in Pacquiao's name unless something huge happens. Pacquiao gets dropped or something like that. Algeria's going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat, right, against a fast-starting opponent in an arena where most of the people have come because of the fast-starting opponent. You add it all up, and I think that Chris Algieri, unfortunately, has little chance of winning this fight, right? You know, put it this way. I think this is a case of too much too soon in a bad venue, right? I know it's very hard to turn down the opportunity to fight Manny Pacquiao, but when they tell you, hey, you're going to fight Manny Pacquiao in Macau, and when you don't have the punch to stop Manny Pacquiao, right? And when you know Pacquiao is going to match you in foot speed, is going to have probably the advantage in hand speed, then how exactly do you expect to win the fight? I know Algeria's talking about following the blueprint set forth by Marquez, right? Understand, again, Marquez figured Pacquiao out over several rounds. Clearly, Algeria doesn't plan to follow what Marquez did in the first round of the first Pacquiao fight, and unfortunately, this is the first time Algeria's seeing Pacquiao. And I believe it's hard to duplicate what Marquez did because Marquez is setting up traps and stuff like that. And, you know, I think that's hard to do. I would also argue that Marquez probably hits harder than Chris Algieri. So, I believe gamblers are right to be all over Manny Pacquiao in this fight. Because the odds are what they are, this fight might be unbettable. The only play I see that might return a decent return would be Manny Pacquiao by KO, but even that is watered down. So proceed with caution here. But make no mistake, I think Manny Pacquiao wins this fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.